Hello my dudes, I'm Kirby, this is Kirby Meets Audio, and today we're gonna to talk about step two in my process of designing speakers. Today we're gonna to pick drivers. It's a good day, it's a good driver day. It's a good day. Just a reminder, over at kmakekits.com, uh, I'm gonna have worksheets, downloadable worksheets for you guys. Um, that's just kind of a layout of my process and what we're gonna be talking about today. Might make Watch this video a little easier and make your build a little easier. Go check it out. All right. There are so many different brands and types of speakers out on the market. It can be really intimidating thinking that you have to narrow it down to just one. Um, but that's what's so great about step one in the plan, uh, last video. Um, it helped us narrow down what exactly we want this speaker to be. We're gonna use that information to narrow down our prospects. By the way, if you haven't watched uh, that video, the first video, go pause this right now, go watch it, put a link up there. Um, it's gonna make everything make much more sense in this video. All right, now that we have a clear understanding of what we want and don't want from our speaker project and we answered our two main questions, uh, we can move on. Let's get down to drivers. For this particular project we're working on in this series, we decided we wanted to have either a ported enclosure or a passive radiator enclosure. We also decided that we were gonna use a two-way crossover system, so we're gonna have a tweeter and a woofer. We also came up with a list of constraints and goals. Uh, you wanna keep that close, moving forward. Okay, so there's seven steps I like to keep in mind when I'm picking my drivers, um, and those steps are split into two parts. First part, number one is goals and constraints. Number two is enclosure size. Number three is crossover type. And number four is budget. And then for the second part, number one is frequency range. Number two is sensitivity. And number three is looks. So using the information we came up with in step one and applying it towards the first part of the seven steps we just talked about, we can pretty quickly narrow down our driver prospects. All right, so number one is goals and constraints. Um, this is just letting you know that you need to have those with you uh, available to move on to the next steps. It's not really a step, it's just a reminder. Number two is enclosure size. This is important because back in the plan, we decided that the front baffle of this kit speaker is going to be five inches wide. So that cuts out every speaker above about four inches because it's just not gonna fit in our project. Number three is crossover. So we know we're gonna be using a two-way crossover in this kit. So we know we're gonna have a tweeter and a midwoofer. So that's relevant to us because we want to use a midwoofer and not a full range driver. And number four is budget. So we know we need to have our drivers to be under a certain price to make the overall budget work. All right, so let's use this information to narrow down our prospects. So I'm starting with 447 options for woofers. Um, now, just applying the fact that we can't have uh, any woofers above four inches and that we have to be using Dayton audio components, that cuts our prospects down to 27. And then when we factor in our budget, that cuts it again down to only 10. So remember in the last video when I talked about constraints being a good thing and you want a lot of them? This is a perfect example of them. 447 drivers is a crazy amount of drivers, but 10 drivers is fine. You can go through those pretty easily. So constraints equals focus. All good. Now it's nice to narrow your prospects, but you might get to a point where you're actually narrowing too much and you don't have enough options to meet your priorities and your goals. Um, at this point, you gotta you got do something. So you can either change your goals to meet your options or you can change your constraints to widen your choices. Okay, so now that we've widened our choices down to around 10 drivers, we really dive into the specs and use that second set of the seven steps to um, figure out exactly which drivers we're gonna work for our project. All right, let's start with frequency range. So I compare each driver's frequency range. And I know that I'm gonna be adding a tweeter to the system, and tweeters normally have a frequency range that goes down to about 1,000 to 3,000 hertz. So when I'm looking at my woofers, I need to make sure that the upper part of their frequency range is above 3,000 hertz. We need a little overlap there. So now if for whatever reason I get my heart set on a woofer, or my options are so slim that all my options can only go up to about 1,000 hertz, or they're limited in their frequency range in whatever way, that means I just need to find a tweeter that matches that woofer. So I need to find a tweeter that has a low frequency range that can go down below 1,000 hertz or to 1,000 hertz. It's gonna match that woofer. This is a, you know, a little iterative game that you're gonna be playing with the frequency ranges. 
But this is probably the most important part of choosing drivers. Um, so spend some time, spend some time uh, picking the right ones. All right, number two is sensitivity. Sensitivity is really important, but it can be adjusted later on in the crossover. But good sensitivity now means less components in your audio path later on, which is a good thing. These speakers are gonna be in an MTM configuration, which just means there's gonna be two woofers and one tweeter per channel. So with sensitivity, we wanna make sure that the tweeter is a little more sensitive than the woofers. What this will do is it'll make sure that the tweeter plays just as loud, the one tweeter plays just as loud as the two woofers. All right, and last but certainly not least is looks. Um, if it comes down to two pretty close in specs uh, woofers and you gotta just pick one or the other, might as well pick the one that looks better. Um, I wouldn't pick looks over specs uh, unless you don't care, but you know, looks are still important. <laughs> All right, using these three factors, I narrowed my 10 drivers down to just two. The Dayton Audio DS90 three inch midwoofer, which I've actually used before and I like it a lot, or the new Dayton Audio TCP 115 four inch midwoofer. I haven't used it before, but it looks promising. So I'm actually gonna move forward with both, um, basically splitting my one project into two projects and I'm basically gonna let them battle it out in software later on and see who's the winner. This is actually how I do a lot of my speaker designs. I'll pick a few woofers, few tweeters, and put them all into software, model them, and see how they sound, see how they sound, see how they look, see how the specs look uh, in software. Picking a tweeter is basically the exact same process. Um, use your project constraints to narrow down your uh, prospects, and then start diving into specs and Pick a good one. Well, one that fits. One that fits your woofer. That's the important thing. I actually made a video a year or two ago on the seven steps I use to select drivers. It goes into a little more detail on each step. Um, you can check it out right up here. Uh, I think I had long hair then or something. I, I look different, that's for sure. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna stick with the Dayton Audio TD20F uh, tweeter. It's a newer, new-ish tweeter. I've played around with it a little bit in the shop uh, and I like it. It's a good solid tweeter. Budget's perfect, size is perfect, and the frequency range is right where I want it. So, it's a good one. All right, and we selected drivers for this project. Um, keep in mind that this is an iterative process. Uh, just because you selected a certain driver or a certain set of drivers now, doesn't mean that you can't come back later and pick new ones. Yeah. You're not stuck with anything. This is yes, oh, free will, man. Just do, do what you want. Uh, and actually, it's really good to go back and, and pick new ones and, and put through a bunch of drivers through the next few steps in software just to get an idea of how different drivers model differently. Uh, uh, that's good. All right, in the next video, we're gonna get down and dirty with our first software program and we're gonna design an enclosure. Um, I'm hoping that video is going to come out next week. That's it. <laughs> I have speaker building kits and plans with wood kits and free kits on my website, kmakits.com. Go check them out. I have a Patreon page where awesome fans like you help me make these videos. I love you guys. You're awesome. Thank you. And you can see all the fun behind the scenes stuff and what I'm doing outside of the shop uh, on my Instagram, Kirby Meets Audio. Just search it. I'm there. <laughs> um, and then that's it. I'll see you guys next week. This is a fun. This is a. This is a, this is a fun. This is a, this is a fun. This is a fun process. I hope you guys like these videos. If you guys have suggestions for making how I give this information more fun and in, in like in a more interesting way, I would love to hear your feedback because I'm not sure what to do. I'm doing like stuff with stuff up like on the screen, but um. Yeah, feedback would be great. All right, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye.